Welcome to the Be Your Own Answer podcast, empowering good people like you to amplify your voice, your message, your movement. We believe that when 10,000 uncommon leaders step into high-level platforms, we will transform and heal communities across the planet. It's time to be your own answer. And now your host, Narissa Street. Welcome to Redefining Good, the Be Your Own Answer series about effective change. In today's episode, I challenge conventional wisdom by letting you know that you are an imposter. So here's how to lead when you don't fit in. My name is Narissa Street, and in this series, I reflect on my two decades of experience working with social organizations, small businesses, artists, and other change agents who are working to benefit their community. The world has changed. And I'd like to offer some new approaches to executives who want to stay relevant while serving. Today, we're addressing a widely known concept called imposter syndrome from an uncommon perspective. For over two decades, I've worked with community organizations and progressive business owners who want to make a positive impact in the world. Most of us start out the same way. We see that something isn't operating as it should be. Maybe it's a car that's guzzling too much gas and impacting the environment, or a community losing too many teenagers to gun violence. The bottom line is the status quo just isn't acceptable to us. So we step fully into the world of the problem that we see. And it's even more terrible because everyone in leadership seems pretty comfortable being there. We, however, despite our passion and sometimes bravado, question whether we're in the right place. We may even question our capacity to get things accomplished, thinking we've achieved things by luck. This, my friends, is imposter syndrome. So it was originally called imposter phenomenon, and it was coined in the 1970s, this term, by Pauline Rose Clance and Suzanne Imes, who are two psychologists who were studying at the time high achieving women. What these psychologists discovered is that the lack of support for the women's goals, coupled with society's expectations of women at that time, created an environment that undermined the women's self-esteem. While men who are unsure about their capabilities would find mentors who could alleviate their doubts, women during that time would be questioned about their need to be different than societal norms. In all cases, the women were capable of the achievements they pursued. It was the environment that they were in that was toxic to their development and self-esteem. Want more inspiration in the palm of your hand? Pick up Nerissa's copy of 31 Days of Yes and have it delivered straight to your device. Get it at beyourownanswer.com slash get 31 days. You are an imposter to the status quo. Your discomfort means you are in the right place. It also means that if you're willing to stand in the truth of who you are, you will bring a change. You're an imposter because You're different. You're supposed to be an imposter. But that's where things become difficult. The support system you need won't be found in the environment you want to change. If you keep looking for it there, as these women would in their workplace environments, you'll definitely feel like you don't belong. You need to come to the environment you want to change, prepared to withstand it. Here's an example. The toxic environment that makes you feel like an imposter is like a pot of boiling water. You can either approach it 
like a carrot, an egg, or coffee. As a carrot, you can go in hard and unrelenting, but you'll come out soft. As an egg, you can be fragile, and then your heart will be hardened. But as coffee, you go in and you change the place you find yourself in. Here's the radical insight. Coffee is already ground when it hits the water. It has already been shaped for a purpose. You'll feel less like an imposter and you'll be more effective if you're very clear about the purpose you serve wherever you go. But in order to do that, you've got to be grounded. See what I did there? You've got to be grounded and centered. <laughs> According to the psychological studies, most of the people who suffered from imposter syndrome, what we call it now, attributed their success to an external cause like luck or a temporary circumstance like effort instead of their own inherent ability. And while luck and hard work may be a factor in your success, the reality is that your continued ability to be impactful comes from a gift that is uniquely yours. Truthfully, I felt like an imposter when I first started giving public presentations. I couldn't believe that the people in the audience were listening to what I had to say. I dressed professionally, but I overprepared. And so I delivered a perfect yet rigid speech. I thought I did terribly, but it was widely complimented. Here's why I thought I did terribly. I was so focused on outer approval that I became disconnected to the experience of the moment. I couldn't sense when people were being impacted by my words. And because I missed my own impact, that was more false evidence that I wasn't meant to be there. If you're feeling like an imposter, that means you're comparing yourself to others in the room. But I thought you were there to change the room, beloved. Get grounded in what makes you different. This is the tool. Establish a clear purpose that feels right and let that firm foundation support you in changing things. Get help from your outside network. And be okay with being an imposter. So my colleagues in the field, the world is calling you to redefine the good game. Don't you want your great community impact to be there after you've gone? So it's time to bring the idea of radical self-care to community leadership and then to the businesses and organizations we run. Our next episode in the series is titled, Every Superhero Has a Weakness, The Savior Complex, or The Dangers of Knowing the Problem Too Well. Subscribe to this podcast here and turn on notifications so you won't miss an episode. And tell me your thoughts about this series. Comment on our YouTube page or send a direct mail to beyourownanswer at gmail.com. Again, that's beyourownanswer at gmail.com. Catch us again. Thank you for listening to the Be Your Own Answer podcast. Share this episode with someone who needs it. Find us at beyourownanswer.com. Thank you.